want to present some general concepts first, and then we're going to write a little bit of code together to make this like more concrete with a specific example. Um, we're going to focus for the next few days on graphical user interfaces. Um, the word interface is used here, not like an interface in Java. A graphical user interface is just a way of a user interacting, interfacing graphically with a computer program. Um, so unfortunately, like the word interface is used in like two related but different ways here. Um, when we create a GUI um, in Java, uh, there's at least three different kinds of objects. And so I wanna like introduce each of these and define what they mean. We have components we have events and we have listeners. And these three different types of objects work together to make our GUI, our app work. This model is, the words might be slightly different in other programming languages and other frameworks, um, but they're fairly universal concepts. Um, of course, we're just focusing on it from a Java perspective, um, but these same concepts show up if you do an app in, Node.js, like JavaScript, or um, a mobile app in Swift, or any of these other things have the same parts. All right, so let's start with a component. A component in our graphical user interface is either an indicator, meaning it's displaying some sort of information, or it's a control, which means it allows some sort of user interaction. Okay. Um, Here's examples of components. A button is a component. A button allows a user to click on it. That allows user interaction. That's a control. A text field is an indicator. It displays some text on the screen that the user can read. Um, labels, I guess a label is more of an indicator. A text field allows a user to actually type text in. So that's more of a control. Menus is a control. It allows a user to select an option. Um, those are all components. Another type of component is a container. A container is a component that holds other components. We call this the composite design pattern. Um, a dialog box, think of when you do something on the computer and a window pops up and you have to hit like okay or cancel. A dialog box is a container. Inside that dialog box are other components like labels and buttons and things like that. Um, the entire window, think back to your cityscape lab. You had a cityscape frame. That frame, that window, is actually a container that holds on to other components like your cityscape component. Um, so these will become, these parts will become more important. So basically everything in our graphical user interface that you see on the screen is a component. Sometimes you don't even see it. Sometimes it's like just an invisible container holding other components together, grouping other components together. So components are one of the three important pieces to make our, our graphical user interface work. The second important piece are events. Events um, are objects, like an event object is created every time something related to our app happens. Um, if the mouse is moved, the Java framework creates a mouse moved event. If a mouse button is clicked, the Java framework creates a mouse button clicked event or dragged. If they, a button is clicked um, like in our dialog box, Java creates, the Java runtime creates a button clicked event. A keyboard key is pressed. A keyboard press event is created. Some timer expires that we had configured. A timer expired event. Um, most of these events correspond to user actions. They're clicking on things, they're dragging things, they're moving their mouse around, they're typing on the keyboard but it doesn't have to, right? Like a timer expiring isn't like a user event. It's an event that we set up to be, um, to have created. So events are the actions that happen within our GUI. Um, so we have components, the elements with which a user can interact um, and events, interesting things that happen in our application. And then the connection between these is the third key part when we do our GUI um, oop, I got ahead of myself. Let's talk about event generation first. Um, the Java framework, the Java library generates the events for us. We don't usually create our own events. Um, so for example, the J button class, which is part of the Java standard library and represents a button component. When the user clicks on it, 
the Java framework, that class takes care of creating a new action event object. Um, and we simply interact with that event object. We don't have to create it. It's created for us. So events are generated by the Java framework. We simply respond to them. Um, and we'll see an example of that in just a second. Here's the third part. This is what I was starting to talk about. The third part is what connects the components and the events to like our code. We want to respond to these different events. And the way we do this is by creating listener objects. A listener um, is another design pattern um, that's very, very common. A listener waits for an event to occur. And when that event occurs, a method in the listener is invoked by the framework. We don't have to worry about that. Um, and then inside that method, we can write whatever code we need to respond to that event. Um, so the user clicks on a button, we want to do something, we write the code that responds to that user clicking on that specific button. We're gonna learn about a new concept today called an inner class, um, which is a way that we commonly write these listener um, classes and implement these listener interfaces. Um, all of the listener interfaces we need for our GUI are already defined as part of the Java standard library. So for example, if we want to listen to events from a button, we implement the action listener interface and we implement one specific method and we're good to go. Um, and we'll see an example of that today, um, as well as like why we do the inner class part of it. Um, we'll work our way up to that. Um, so the Java standard library defines several different interfaces that are all related to listeners. We implement these interfaces to respond to the associated events. So if we care about what the user does with the mouse, we write a class that implements the mouse listener interface. If we care about what the user does with a button, we write a class that implements the action listener interface. If we care about what the user does on the keyboard, we write a class that implements the key listener interface and so on and so forth. In addition to writing that class that implements the interface, the other really important step and one that we sometimes forget is simply writing this class doesn't actually do anything. If I write a class that implements the action listener interface, that doesn't help me unless I also tell the button hey, button, when you're clicked on, call me, <laughs> right? You have to do the second step of actually telling the component, in this case, the button, add me to your list of listeners to notify when the user clicks on you. Um, otherwise, there's no way for the button to know that I even created that listener class. Um, and so it will never tell me when it's, it's clicked. So just keep that in mind. Like if you write all this stuff and like you seem to be getting like none of your listeners are getting called, double check that you actually added the listener to the component, to the button or whatever it is you want events from. So, and we'll do that in the example together as well. All right, so that's specifically how it works for Java. Just to kind of give you a bigger picture, um, there is a general design pattern used for graphical applications um, and it's called the model view controller pattern. This is not specific to Java. This or a variation of this shows up with every application framework I've ever seen. Um, it's basically just a good example of our computational thinking skill of decomposition that is separating these responsibilities um, to keep our code cleaner, um, easier to understand, better organized. And so really every application has three parts. There's the model, which um, what is the data represented by our application. Um, there's nothing graphical about that. That's just like the actual like objects and their attributes um, where you know you can keep track of, of everything. If we're writing like a weather application, um, the model would be like, hey, we're gonna have like a city object. And then that city object has certain attributes like what's the current temperature, what's the current humidity, what's the current wind speed. Um, that data isn't, related at all to how we visually present that on the screen to the user. Um, it's just the data of our, of our objects. The view part of model view controller simply focuses on how do we display this information to the user? Um, so the view is very, very particular. We might have a certain view if we have a web application and we're displaying it on a website. We might have a different view if it's a mobile application on a phone. We might have a different view if it's 
um, on some customized, you know, LED display screen somewhere. Um, and then the third part is the controller part, which connects our model to the view. And this is where all the event handling stuff goes on. Um, in today's example, we are primarily focused on the view, all of the different components we'll be adding, and the controller, all of our listeners. We're not going to really have much of a data model because we're just going to do some simple stuff with buttons. Um, but when we get you know farther on in like the lab at the end of the unit, we'll have all three of these, all three of these parts. So here's oops, here's what we're going to do together in just a moment. We're going to go through these four steps to create a very simple graphical user interface. Um, we're going to define and set up each of our UI components. So we're going to have like a frame and a button and stuff like that. We're going to create listener objects um, to listen for the events we care about. We're going to register those listener objects with the appropriate UI components, like the buttons that generate those events. Um, and then we're going to implement that listener interface to define how we're going to respond to that event. So these are the four steps we're gonna go through. We're gonna use a couple new classes. We're gonna use the J button class. Um, the J button class is, uh, we'll create a new J button and it's just a push button on the screen. It allows the user to click on it. When they click on it, it generates an event, um, specifically the action event. Um, and we can listen to that. We're also gonna use the J label class. The J label class is very straightforward. It just displays a line of text or an image or both. Um, it is an indicator, not a control. The user cannot interact with it. They can just read it and look at it. Um, we're going to implement the action listener interface um, so that we can listen for the user clicking on the button. The action listener interface has only one method and the method header is here. So we will implement the action performed method um, which takes as one parameter the event that was generated. This graphic I think is important. When we have all these different components, sometimes it's confusing what is what. So these are the four components we're gonna have in our example here. J we've seen JFrame before. JFrame is the entire window, including the bar at the top of the window, including any scroll bars you have, including the window border. Java uses the word frame because think of it as like a picture frame. It's the outermost part that goes around the picture. Um, so we'll have a J frame. Inside that J frame, we will put a J panel. Okay. Um, we haven't used J panel before. J panel is a subclass of J component. Um, it has some specialized behavior. Um, so we will create a new J panel and put it inside the frame. So the J panel lives inside this green area here, right? So it's inside of the frame. Um, inside of the J panel, we will put a J button, this click me button here. Um, inside, also inside of the J panel, we will put a J label where we can like change the text. Okay. So this is how we compose, put one component inside of another to build up this GUI that we're gonna use for this example. So we've got a frame, inside the frame we have a panel, inside the panel we have a button and a label. That's what we're going for. All right, so let's take a look at this together. Um, let's open, let's create a new class. I don't think I have any starter code for this now. So let's create a new class called button viewer. As we develop more sophisticated graphical user interfaces, we will create multiple classes. Um, for this very first example, we're just gonna create a single class called button viewer. And inside of this class, we're gonna create the frame and the panel and the buttons and all the other stuff. Um, so that, that's what we're looking for here. We need to add several imports to the top here. Um, these are other classes we need to import. 
The first one is in the Java X.swing package and it's called JFrame. So we, some of these were in starter code from like last semester, um, but there's gonna be several. So we're gonna have also JPanel. I just wanna get these all here so we don't run into compilation issues later. Swing is the name of, uh, not the newest, but relatively new, um, Java framework for doing graphical user interfaces. J button and J label. These are the four components that we'll be using. We're also gonna be using um, a, one specific event. That's in the Java AWT package. We're gonna use the action event and we need to import the listener that goes with it, which is the action listener. Java, Java is not our package, Java, there we go. All right, so we got a bunch of stuff here. Um, put in our name and today's date. And I'm gonna delete everything else in the template. We'll do the rest ourselves. All right, um, we're gonna build this up over a couple of steps. We're gonna do this incrementally, but we're gonna eventually get all four of those steps that we had um, on the slide in terms of our example. Uh, so let's start by figuring out some instance variables, actually some constants first we need. So let's create two constants. So I'm gonna make them private and final. So they're a constant, they're gonna be ints. It's gonna be the size of our frame, the size of the window. We're gonna make our window 400 pixels wide. And 100 pixels high. I like to make these constants at the top of the viewer class so that it's easy to just change them right there and then have everything else um, adjust to it. So um, to start with, we're gonna do this incrementally, like I said. Um, so I'm gonna try to model an incremental approach because that's what you're gonna do when you get to the practice activity related to this. Let's just get a button on the screen. Like that's gonna be our first step. Even that involves a few steps because the button has to go in the side of a panel and a panel has to go inside of the frame. So we're gonna need three instance variables. We're gonna need a J frame. That's the whole window. We're gonna need a J panel. That's the part inside of the frame um, that we don't really see, but it's a container into which we can put other components. And the other component we wanna start with is a J button. So those are the three instance variables we're focused on at the moment. We're gonna write a constructor here for button viewer, a default constructor. And inside this default constructor, we're gonna create all of these different components. We're gonna put the button inside of the panel and the panel inside of the frame. We're gonna create our listener. Um, we're gonna do all the things that that we want to do. Um, and then we'll just construct this button viewer object like in a, a main method to get the whole app run. All right, so step one that I shared was to define and set up the user interface components. Again, components are the frame, the panel, and the button. So we have to create a new frame. So we'll say this.frame equals new jframe. Cool, we have a frame. We also need to create a new panel, okay? So when I create the user interface components, I like to start kind of from the top down. So I create the frame first, because that holds everything. And then I create the panel, which goes inside the frame, because that's the container for specific components. And then I create each of the individual components. Um, that just works well for 
for me, you could probably do it in a bottom up approach, but just to explain my motivation. Um, so let's also create the panel. This dot panel equals new J panel. The default constructors for these are fine. We don't need any specialized behavior at this point. Um, and let's create the button too. Now, when we create a new button, the button constructor takes one parameter, which is the label for the button. So we'll create a new button with a label on that button that says, click me. Creating these is an important step. We now have a frame object, a panel object, and a button object, but it's insufficient. We actually need to compose these. That is, we need to put the button inside of the panel. So the way we do that is the jPanel class has a method called add. And it takes one parameter, which is a component, to add to the panel. So jPanel is a subclass of jComponent, and jButton is also a subclass of jComponent. So we can add anything that is a jComponent to a panel. So since a button is a component, we can add it. Since a label is a component, we could add that too. Um, we could even put panels inside of panels if we wanted to. Similarly, the frame method also, or the jframe class also has an add method where we can pass one component, but only one component to be inside of our frame. The one component we want inside of our frame is the panel. So the button, so the button is inside of the panel, the panel is inside of the frame. This is great. We're gonna write more stuff here in a second, but let's actually jump down here and write a public static void main method, like we often do, just to make it easy to run everything. I could put this main method in a totally different class. I'm just putting it at the end of this class for convenience. All we need to do to run our graphical um, application here is to create a new viewer object, create a new button viewer, that's it. When we create this new button viewer, um, it will run this constructor. It's gonna go through and do this stuff. All right. We actually need a few more lines of code here in the constructor to actually make it show up on the screen um, and to configure it. So we created a new frame, but we didn't specify its size yet. So let's do that. So we're gonna say this dot frame dot set size. We specify the width, we'll use that constant. We specify the height. Another method we always call is called set default close operation. What this means is when the user clicks on the little like X in the window in Windows or the little um, red button on the Mac, um, what happens to our app? So when they close the window, does the whole app quit? Um, sometimes we want that behavior, sometimes we don't. In this case, that is the behavior we want. So if they press the close button, we're gonna specify with this constant, the app is gonna exit. So the default close operation is to exit when the window, when the frame is closed. This method here, set visible, that actually tells the Java framework, hey, display this frame and everything inside of it and start our graphical user interface, okay? When we run this method, the graphical user interface starts. It starts listening for events. Um, our code isn't running anymore um, until an event happens. And we'll talk more through like the flow of execution. We'll worry about that a little bit later, but... Um, Let's run this just to see like what we've done so far. So if I run the main method of the button viewer class, there's our graphical user interface. We have a frame. Inside the frame is this panel, which we can't really see. It's just this gray area here. And inside that panel, we have this button, click me. And nothing happens when I click it because we haven't done any listeners yet. 
but we have something on the screen. This is huge. This is our first graphical user interface with like buttons and stuff. And if I close it, the program ends just like we want. So this is great that we've displayed stuff, but we're not doing anything useful yet. Um, so we actually need to write a class that implements this action listener interface. So let's go create that class. So I'm going back to the BlueJay project window. I'm gonna create a new class called click listener, listener. We're gonna to need to import a couple of classes here. We need to import java.awt.event.action event. This is the event that we will receive when the user clicks on the button. And we need to implement the interface that we're going to implement, which is the action listener interface. This class is gonna be one of the easiest classes we've ever written. It's gonna be very brief. Public class click listener implements action listener. Here we are making the promise. Um, and right now the compiler is already not happy because we haven't fulfilled that promise yet. We are making the promise to implement the action listener interface, meaning we will definitely write, implement the action performed method. That's the only method we're gonna put in here. We're just gonna say public void action performed. And if you're like, how do we know what this is? We just look up the dot Java doc, right? So if we look up the Java doc for the action listener interface, we're gonna see it only has this one method. We're gonna see exactly what the signature is. Um, and we know what we have to implement. We're gonna do this very incrementally. We're just gonna to print to the terminal that the button was clicked. That's it. Let's just print a message, button clicked. Because we ran, our, we ran our app once and we saw that we had the frame and the panel and the button, that was a great step. Now we wanna actually respond in some way to the user clicking on the button just by printing a message to the terminal so we know that we received the event. That's it. Cool. Oops. Not a lot of code in this listener, right? It kind of seems like a pain to like create a whole new class for that. And we there is a better way. And we'll look at that in a moment, just to reassure you. But let's actually do something useful. So let's go back to the button viewer. And in the constructor here, after we've created the UI components, but before we've like made the frame visible and stuff, let's do step two. Step two is to create the listener object. We create a listener object just like we create any object, just like we create a turtle. So the type of the variable is a click listener. That's the class we just wrote. The name of the variable I'm gonna use is listener, and I'll create a new click listener. We didn't write a constructor for our click listener class, but that's okay. Java will fill in an empty blank default constructor for us. We don't have any instance variables to initialize, so that's easy enough. That's all we do for step two. We now have a listener, but we're not done. We don't want to skip step three. This is the one that we often forget. We need to register the listener object with the component that generates events. Because this listener object that we just created, it has the capability to listen to any action event. Um, but the Java framework doesn't know which action events we're interested in until we tell some component in our GUI, hey you, hey button, when you're clicked on, call my method on this object. Um, so that's why this step three is so important. It's kind of the analogy I use, it's kind of the equivalent of like, if you have a phone and a phone number, that's great, but unless you tell your friend what your phone number is, 
they can't text you, right? Like it does, having the phone is insufficient. There's a second step, which is someone actually has to know your number in order to communicate with you. Having a listener object is an important first step, but it's insufficient. If we don't tell anyone we have this listener object, no one's gonna call us. Um, so that's why this step three is so important. So we're gonna tell the button, this stop button, we're gonna invoke the add action listener method, listener, and we're gonna pass as a argument, a reference to our new click listener object that implements the action listener interface. Now the button knows, hey, whenever I'm clicked, I'm gonna call the object referenced by this variable, and I'm gonna invoke its action performed method. Those are the key steps we need. Let's see if it works. We'll switch to our BlueJ project window. We'll run the main method. Here's our little window. When I click, click me, sure enough, in the terminal, it prints that the button is clicked. This is great. We have a functional, I don't know if it's useful, <laughs> we have a functional graphical user interface. That's an important first step. All right, let's, let's make this a little bit more useful. Um, you may be familiar with the very popular app cookie clicker, right? We can make this like a cookie clicker. Let's, let's put a label in our frame. That's how many times we click the button, all right? So let's add that to it. Um, so let's go back through these steps and see what additional stuff we need to report that. So we've already got the frame, we've already got the panel, we've already got the button right here. Actually, I'm gonna, give me one second. I'm gonna actually commit my changes to GitHub because I wanna capture like we finished step one. So. Cool. And that way you can go back and see like where we started from and where we ended up. All right, so now let's go right here. And after we create the button, let's create a label. So we'll say, oh, let's add an instance variable first. Private J label, label. And then we can say this dot label equals new J label. And J label constructor takes one parameter, which is the text to display as the label. We're gonna say zero clicks. We're gonna add that label to the panel. So this dot panel dot add this dot label. So we added the button, we added the label. By default, the, the, the AWT Java framework, um, it will arrange the different components so they're reasonably well spaced and arranged within the, within the panel. So we don't really have to worry about that unless we want to. So we've added the label to the panel. We still add the panel to the frame. That all looks good. So we have a label now. Um, we're gonna need another instance variable to keep track of how many times did the user click on the button. So let's add that too. Private int click count. And let's initialize that right at the beginning. This dot click count equals zero. We wanna start with zero. Here's the challenge that we run into, right? We want to change, we want to increment the click count instance variable when, we re, when our listener is notified that the user has clicked on a button. And we want to change the text displayed in this label at the same time. And the challenge is inside our click listener class here, 
we don't have a reference to the button viewer object, right? There's no, there's no way right now that this class is connected to button viewer, so we can't change those things, right? And even if we did have a reference to button viewer, which we could do, we could add it to our constructor and store it in an instance variable. Click count is private. This label is private. Um, we would have to add public methods to button viewer to allow us to change the click count and to allow us to change the label. Okay. But, but that wouldn't really be a great design because the only class that actually needs access to the click count and the label is the click listener. We don't want other random code in our BlueJ project to be able to change the click count and be able to change the label. So we don't really want to expose that through public methods. And so the approach we take here is a new concept. Um, and this new concept is called an inner class. Um, what an inner class is, is we take the class that we wrote as its own independent file and we copy that code. So copy the click listener class. And we put the class inside of the button viewer class. So I'm gonna to go to the end here and I'm still inside the button viewer class. Here's the closing bracket for button viewer. And I'm gonna paste and reformat. Control shift I or on Windows or Command Shift I on the Mac to get it all nicely formatted. I'm going to paste in the click listener class. So this whole year I've tried to be careful and I say like, in general, there is exactly one class in a file. And the reason why I always say in general is because when we create an inner class, now we've got two classes in a file. This click listener class is inside of this button viewer class. Um, there's a class. And the reason why this is useful is this inner class here has access to all of the instance, private instance variables of the button viewer class because it's inside of that class, right? So private means anything in the class, including other classes, can access private instance variables. So this is super convenient because we can replace this code to say click count plus plus to increment our click count and label.setText click count plus clicks. One caution, we cannot say this.click count plus plus because this refers to click listener, not button viewer. We leave out the this and the Java compiler is going to figure it out. And it, it will find the click count instance variable in the enclosing class. And then we go back to our BlueJ project window and we delete click listener. We do not need it anymore. We just need the button viewer class. Let's run it. Run the main method. Here, here it is. Click, one click, two clicks, three clicks, five clicks. Don't break the mice in your exuberance to try out this thing. But we just wrote cookie clicker. We can put this on an app store, get millions of dollars. College fund, complete. 